Hello and welcome to the next section of videos in our Rust Data Structures and Algorithms course. During this section of videos, we are going to be looking at the Entity Component System way of working, or ECS for short. And during this section, we are going to be building a simple version of that. During this video in particular, we're going to spend some time looking at what ECS is and how to use it. So in principle, ECS breaks up objects in a different way to most other forms of programming. Whereas in a lot of common object oriented systems, you will have your objects and your object has all of its different properties stored as part of that object, which has the problem that if you need different objects to act in different ways, you have either have to give them all, all of the methods, or you need to have some way of distinguishing which ones have which bits and stuff, which can get awkward and unwieldy. ECS takes a completely different approach, which is instead of having collection of objects, each with many properties, it has many collections of properties, each ordered by an object ID, so that if an object has a property, it's in the list of properties of that type, a list or a store. Maybe you would have a store of speeds and a store of positions, and you could store many other kinds of things like that. And in object oriented, they would be part of the same object. Every object would have its speed and every object would have its position. And some objects wouldn't necessarily have a speed, but you'd have to work around that. In ECS, you have a collection of positions and a collection of velocities, each sorted by the ID of the appropriate object. So if you want to find out the speed of object N, you get the collection of speeds, section N, and you get its positions from the positions collection at N. And then when you actually want to process anything, you have a collection of systems which run through just the data that they need. So different systems require different things. So for example, the actual movement system depends on its velocity and position, but the rendering system doesn't care about the velocity, only the position, that kind of idea. So each one grabs the bits they need from the appropriate vex or stores. And this actually allows for a certain amount of parallelism because if you've got one thing working on one set of vex and it doesn't overlap at all with another one, then you can just use them separately. And there are some other interesting benefits. The two main benefits, one is it helps you manage your memory in a way that is consistent because you're no longer storing pointers to other objects all over the place. If say, for example, you've got one object that's following another object, you no longer store a pointer to that object that could then be freed or wasted in some other way, which actually provides a layer of protection. And when we get to the generations part, you'll see kind of how you get that protection that if that object disappears, you know for sure it's disappeared and you don't have to worry about that. The second thing is that it's actually faster. And this isn't because it's naturally fast, but because of the way computers cache memory in big chunks. So when you load items from a VEC, you may actually load a thousand items at the same time. By working in this way with systems where you just grab a thousand and do all the processing on that thousand, it can actually be quite fast. Again, that will vary on implementations, but that is a significant benefit of doing things in a way that suits the memory. So hopefully that's clarified a bit of what ECS can do and how it works roughly. Over the next few videos, we will be building that so you will be able to see 